if it's conservative. If I'm looking for something liberal and realistic, this is the place to be. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another segment of our podcast. My name is Marco Sinkiwane. And as usual, um, I'm a young brother today. Um, <laughs> yes. Joining me today is Pastor Gade. Uh, Pastor, perhaps you can introduce yourself because I think this is the first time you've come sure. onto the platform and hopefully you're the first of many. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, viewers. Uh, hello and how are you? I want to believe we're going to have a good time together as we'll be discussing these things on our platform. All right. So our topic today, we'll be discussing church discipline. It's a, lot of, it's a thing that a lot of young people struggle with. Mm -hmm. we, we, we commit sins, uh, we get pregnant, we get people pregnant. Uh, we, you know, we, I think that's the lowest hanging fruit. <laughs> yes. Um, so maybe can we, can we start by just exploring the different types of discipline that we have in the church um, and sort of what sort of sins warrant a specific type of, of okay. punishment? Okay. Oh, um, yes. I think punishment may be the wrong word. <laughs> discipline. No, discipline, yes. Okay. Uh, I would say there, there are many forms of discipline in the church. Yeah. Um, the, the most common ones are the censure yeah. and uh, there's uh, disfellowship, which we call now dismember. I think these are the most common ones. Okay, so what is the difference between censure and dismember? Okay, uh, now what we can have uh, as a censure is a temporal kind of a discipline yeah. whereby you're given, say, months or some, yeah, months, the list being three months. Okay. And um, you, you're still in the church records. Yeah. You're still a member of the church, but um, there are some things that you need to maybe fix one or two things. Uh, you're still in the church records, but when you're being dismembered, your, your name has been removed. Okay. And you're no longer part of uh, the movement, so to speak. So maybe let's start with uh, being dismembered, because that's a real one, and yes. you maybe have less to, to mm -hmm. speak about it. Yes. Um, isn't it a little drastic? If we are all part of the family of God, uh, isn't dismembering uh, someone a little drastic? Or are they... Uh, or are they well, it's sins that require okay. dismemberment. Okay, you've gone too far now. All right. So I would say um, if you, you sin or you, you make a mistake yes. and um, you are remorseful about it and you are apologetic, yes. uh, there's no reason for one to be dismembered. Okay. But um, if you, you, you have a mistake, you commit a sin and you're proud of it mm -hmm. and you want to repent. Yeah and uh, you want to continue in your mischief, so to speak, or in whatever you're doing, okay. then you'd have denied the faith. All right. So it is the actions that you're doing that entail that th this one has made a mistake like anyone else, yeah. but they're proud of it. Mm. They're not apologetic. They want to continue in whatever they're doing. So this one has denied the faith. Okay. So if you deny the faith, you're no longer a member of the movement. All right. Yes, that's, that's the summer of it. Okay, so what typically, and I know you might, you might try to run away from this question, yes. but what <laughs> yes. typically, what sort of violations typically land up in those sort of... Dismembering. Uh, I think all of the sins that you can think of, okay. you, you can be dismembered for such. Yeah. But um, you, you see, there are some things that are graver, graver, so to speak. The gravity of the matter determines the kind of discipline that is going to be meted. If I break the Sabbath continuously and I'm proud about it, yes. I, I'm, I'm denying the faith. Okay. But we then think of maybe one has to be dismembered because probably they've met that, probably they've done this. Mm -hmm. But even not retaining a faithful tithe, okay. I've denied the faith. All right. But now the gravity of the matter probably entails the, the kind of discipline that's going to come. Okay. Suppose I, I am pregnant. Uh, I have broken the seventh law. Yes. And um, I'm proud of it. And I'm not apologetic. Yes. I'm denying the faith. Okay. So the correction that is coming to me is gift. Gift what you have done. I think the corrective measure is one, two, three, four, five. I said, I know, man, I, you know, I can do what I want. Uh -huh. I've denied the faith. Okay. Okay. Then on to censure. Yes. Now, what is the difference there? I know you mentioned and said, no, you'll be given a timeout for a minimum of three months. But what is the purpose of that timeout? 
Okay, by just sitting and and watching so that people don't see me <laughs> in front. <Yeah. laughs> so the, the 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 whole idea of discipline, uh, it's unfortunate that we take discipline uh, as punitive and not as redemptive. All forms of discipline should be redemptive in nature. If I'm given uh, the three months, the four months, the six months, it's not for me to be just seated there watching people doing stuff, but it's more for, more for me to have more time with my God, reflect on my sin or reflect on my mistake as, as I'm also having more time with my God. Okay. And uh, uh, suppose, you know, there are some sins that are public and people have seen what I've done. And uh, if the church is continuing to use me, then some people say, I, I can as well get away with it. I can do one, two, three, four, five and continue serving in church. So if I take the back seat and they see, oh, the, the pastor is seated there, gift is seated there, then they, you know, they see it and they're also afraid of doing the same thing. So it's redemption in nature, not punitive. All right, so there's two issues. Um, as you know, we discuss yes. our topics extensively before we come and yes, yes. discuss them here. But there's two things that particularly come up often because uh, regarding censure. Yes. And the first one is, you know, a lot of times when people are censured, they then don't have the pastoral care. You are yeah. left alone. You are left alone to deal with what you've done. We assume that, oh, you understand that you broke the seventh commandment. Mm -hmm. uh, come back when you're, be, you'll come back after six months and you should be better. Okay. Uh, okay. Why, and maybe not why is the wrong question, mm -hmm. Is there meant to be pastoral care? Okay. And how do we end up in situations where, you know, people are meant to do self-mending? All right. So um, on the onset, what is to happen is um, I'm given my censure. Yes. Um, actually, before the, the censure, there has to be a lot of pastoral care and counseling, okay. so to speak. Uh, it's not only the pastor, of course, but also even the deaconary yeah. should come in, the elders, everyone in church should be, you know, mourning and weeping for what how they've committed and done. All right. If we do that, then it's it's more of um, redemptive in nature. All right. But when you say, ah, you know, we're waiting for him, we caught him, let's deal with him, then it becomes punitive. It's not the length of time that is going to, you know, make me whole. Yes. It's the quality of time that I spend with my God. Okay. Believe you me, many people were uh, disciplined in church yeah. when they were already in their good books with their God. They had mended their relationship with their God. Yes. But, 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 but we don't know it as a church. We also have, uh, we, we have been wronged as, as, as the body of Christ. We also want to be appeased. Okay. So it's not about we give them a year so that uh, probably you are giving me already when I'm already having a good relationship with my God. Maybe b before, even before uh, the time that I committed the mistake, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have the type of relationship. So when um, one is censured, we need to help the person because they're also a, a public image. Yeah. People will say stuff when I'm censured. Uh -huh. You know, Makwasi did this. And like, yeah, yeah, we got him. So instead of talking the more about him, let's pray the more about the person yeah. and visit him and also incorporate him in church programs or incorporate him in church programs in as much as they may not be as you know active as before, yes. but they should be uh, treated as members of the, of, 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 of the house of God as well. Okay, so that, that brings up an interesting mm -hmm. dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, um, now, what, what can we do as believers? Uh, what sort of corrective measures can we do as believers? Because mm -hmm. realistically, we may try to hide and say, no, mm -hmm. there's meant to be pastoral care, but we both know that a lot of the times it's neglected. It's neglected. But what can we do as a church to correct that mistake? Okay. Um, yeah. I think, I think number one, education is needed. Okay. Uh, you know, we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Some are, are grave mistakes, some are not, yeah. but we are equally the same. Okay. So the fact that um, A and B have been censured does not make C and D holy or better. Yeah. It's just that their issue got to the public and they're known and they've been disciplined. Yeah. So number one, the, those that are censured are not the worst of sinners. Yeah. They're, they're just like us. Okay. Right. Number two, uh, let us be in a position of uh, being empathetic also about what they're going through. You know, man, it's hard to be not participating in church. Yeah. It's hard, especially when you've been used to. Yes. You say, Marcos, you're no longer going to, to the platform doing one or two things. You know, it, it eats you. So we need to feel for the person. Yes. Yeah. So I think one, one corrective measure is to, to, to take discipline as redemption okay. and not as punishment. All right. So my question was more in line with 
the outside of the individual who's being disciplined, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As a corporate body, as a church, yes. He, how do we change that attitude that you know when someone has been disciplined, mm -hmm. he, they are an outcast. Okay. So we need to put them over there because we've seen many mm -hmm. cases where mm -hmm. a lot of people stop worshiping in certain congregations because mm -hmm. of that. We've heard of people who stop coming uh, to the Adventist okay. Church completely. Okay. Uh, so I think maybe that's something that we need to address mm -hmm. uh, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, or they call it corporate. Corporately, yes. I, I would say. Uh, issues come, you know, you, you may have broken the same law, mm -hmm. but uh, there are many things that are involved in, in, the, in the discipline that is going to be met. Yes. Uh, this one broke this law, it was given six months. Okay. This one broke this law, it was given nine. Yeah. So why? It, it's, it's coming from that. You know, we see as if there's partiality. Yeah. Why is it the gift was given three and uh, X was given five? Yeah. So w when you, when uh, the, the investigation, so to speak, in courts, because the church is not FBI. Yes. We also look at the attitudes and also probably the influence that the mm -hmm. person had. Yeah. And uh, we, we was obviously going to have different um, disciplines. Yes. Right. So when, when we announce in church, X is being given three months. Why? When last week, but one, Y was given two. Yeah. Uh, we are looking at even the, the attitude and also the influence. Okay. So in the pew, we need also to know that uh, it's not that the, the, the board of elders or the church board is up to fix one yeah. and uh, liberate the other. Mm -hmm. But also we are looking at many things that are at play. So I, I'll come back to the education that uh, it's not that uh, we want to fix B and C, yeah. but we want to redeem B and C. All right, so then uh, that leads me to the next question. I like that you've taken that yeah. direction. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, there's also a feeling that yes. the, there are some sins that are, are punished <laughs> more than others. Yes. The, how do we arrive at that? Okay. Yeah. Now, I would say uh, public sins. Okay. Um, they have to be corrected publicly. All right and more like private scenes uh -huh. be held privately. Okay. And um, if uh, it is done by the usher, uh -huh. the influence is less. All right. And if it is done by the elder, yes. it is, uh, the, the sphere of influence is bigger. Yeah. So we are also looking at um, uh, the, the person and their influence. Okay. And uh, of course, there are some scenes that um, are more like, you know, drawing more and more of um, disciplines or the, the number of months than yeah. others. Um, some scenes are intentional. Yes. Yeah. You, you actually plan that I'll do one or two, three, four, five, six, seven things and uh, I'm, I'm doing like this. Okay. So if, if, if um, the mistake, so to speak, was intentional, it, it may draw also number of years or number of months or not years, months. Okay. Yeah. So th that's the reason why we see like some mistakes or sins mm -hmm. have more than others. Okay. Yeah. If, if, um, if we're going to be strict about it, a sin is a sin. Yes. Yeah. But uh, some are grievous. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Okay. So is there a provision in our, to say our church manual for, let's say I know my friend is breaking the seventh commandment. Okay. For me to be able to deal with the issue personally between the two of us mm -hmm. yeah, without involving the church? Or is it a case where I need to involve the church? Okay. Eesh. Yeah, that was a tough one. <laughs> now, number one, when, when you see me in error, yeah. you need to come to me and correct me. Okay. Uh, gift what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. You, you shouldn't do one, two, three, four, five. Then um, you, you talk to me privately. Okay. That's what the, the Bible teaches. Then if I don't want to repent and reform, you call them the third part. Yeah. You know what? Gift is indulging, is doing this. Yeah. Then you, you sit me down. Young men, don't do this. Yeah. Then if I say, I ah, know men, I, 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 I don't want to be corrected. Mm -hmm. the, then the Bible says, you consider me as an unbeliever. Okay. The, the, the unfortunate thing that we have is things are running even to, to the church before they are discussed as brothers and sisters. Yes. So I think if we discuss it first mm -hmm. and um, I'm corrected, there's no need, need then to publicize it. Okay. But then if I'm corrected, then I don't want to receive correction. I think a step further can be taken. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So that leaves me to just another question here. Yes. Um, if we look at Matthew 7, verse 1, 
Okay. Um, not read from yes. the King James Version. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, judge not that he not be judged. <laughs> Are we not judging when we... When we discipline people, or when okay. we I can say, "I know you, you've done this," mm-hmm. right? Are we not yeah, looking at the call it the splinter in our neighbor's eye when we have a log in our own eye? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Now, when you're looking at um, judgment, uh, judgment has to do with pronouncing okay. um, a verdict huh? and giving a sentence. Uh, if I say Makosi, you're breaking the Sabbath. I'm not yeah. judging you. I'm just correcting you as my brother. Okay. Uh, I didn't pronounce a verdict or a sentence. But then when you then sit only then sit as a church board mm-hmm. in a church business meeting mm-hmm. and say, Marcos, you've broken the fourth yes. commandment. Yes. yes. Um, you're going to be censured for six months. Exactly. Right? Yeah. There isn't that a pronouncement and a judgment. Good. Good. So judgment, we are pronouncing a sentence and a verdict. Yes. And we're also condemning. Okay. You get it. Right. So when the board sits down, pronounce the sentence, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's the other part of judgment. Okay. But what is then wrong is condemnation. Okay. So if I condemn you, I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm relegating you to hell. All right. This is not salvation material. Yeah. This is not heavenly material. Okay. That is what is prohibited. All right. But to correct each other, uh-huh. I think th- that's what we are here for. Okay. Yeah. Use the scripture for correction for rebuking and all those things in the Lord. Okay. So uh, when we usually read it, uh, judge not so for you not to be judged, you see that the brother is in sin and is trying to find some way to run away with. Yeah. And they, they use that scripture. What the scripture is talking about is condemnation. All right. Don't condemn me and don't relegate me to, to hell because what I would have done. Yeah. I'm, I'm also redeemable. Yeah. So what yeah. is wrong is to then condemn me to hell. Okay. But to correct me in love and in God, even if you give me a yay, it's not judgment. All right. Yes. Um, and the chain of thought that, but I'm saved. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I'm saved by grace. Okay. Um, are you not now then persecuting me <laughs> yeah, okay. when Christ has already died for Allow me to use I this know, grace. <laughs> yes, I know, I, I know what I've done is wrong. Yes. Yeah, but allow me to use this grace. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Um, there's a notion that uh, once saved, always saved. Yeah. And that's so wrong. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm saved. Uh, there's grace for me. Yeah. But I should live in the line of correction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm striving to enter into and that small press towards the mark. Yeah, exactly, I'm pressing towards the mark. Of course, I'm falling the, along the way, yeah. but this is the goal that I want to achieve. So along the way, in the line of grace, yeah. we falter and we fall, but we don't say, ah, no, I, I'm, this, I'm comfortable at the ground. Yeah. I should press on. So in as much as I'm saved by grace, yes. I'm also trying to attain the character of Christ. So the pruning process of removing all these other things comes in form of discipline. Okay. So when we are being disciplined, it's more like pruning. And pruning is painful. When you remove those branches and those funny twigs, it's yeah. painful. Okay. So when I'm disciplined, uh, if, uh, if you're if you a Christian enough, you should take it as pruning. Okay. So these other things are being removed. The dross is going away so that I'm clear and clean. All right. Um, maybe just as we wind up. Yes. How, how does our disciplinary system okay. compared to what the Bible prescribes mm-hmm. in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we always say, no, there's differences. Okay. When Christ was put on the cross, yes. um, a lot of the a lot of the discipline that yes. is prescribed in the Old Testament mm-hmm. was also nailed up. I think, on the cross, okay. Yes. So how do we compare to those two? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, in the Old Testament, you read the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 20, chapter yeah. 19. I think the discipline was more tough. And um, I think it's chapter 19 that says, if your son is, is breaking the law and you are cognizant of it, yes. take him to the elders yeah. and they should you know, beat him at the gate. Mm. You're, you're taking your own son. Yeah. To, to them and say, this is, is a vagabond, is a problem, so one, two, three, four, five. They discipline him. Yeah. And then those are the guys who would stone. Those are the guys who stone you to death. Yeah. Yeah. Discipline in the Old Testament. It was there. When we come then into the New Testament, discipline is still there. Yes. Because remember, it's, it's Judaism that is going on. It is. Then it is evolving. Exactly. Then we get into Christianity. Now, it seems uh, after the cross, 
you know, we have become a bit lenient. Yeah. Uh, and you talked about things that uh, have been nailed on the cross. Yeah. And uh, this side now, we we have this challenge of hiding in grace when we are, you know, being pacified in sin. Yeah. We need to be very careful of not abusing the grace that we have. Mm. So the discipline that we have hitherto is that the church sits down, uh, consider a brother who is in error, as a brother, yeah. they correct him in the Lord. If then he says, I don't want to, then consider him as an unbeliever. And this is the stance of the church even now. We can't yeah. then stone gift because he has committed this sin. Yeah. But what we can do is we are removing, you know, uh, evil from the company of God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there's a question I meant to bring up earlier before I last ask yes. my final question. Yes. So what happens if I deny? Hey, Makosi, you've been working on Sabbath. I tell you, no, guys, I have not been working on Sabbath. How do we address that? Okay. Is that an additional, <laughs> is that an additional sin for lying that must now then be okay, disciplined on its own? Yes. <laughs> Number one, the church, I, I think I've said before, the yeah. church is not FBI. Yeah. It's not an investigation um, unit. We, we are not there to, you know, pry into our lives and see who is doing what. But the church is there as a family. Okay. So our correction, we are correcting each other as a family. The reason why I didn't lie that I was not working on the Sabbath when I was working on the Sabbath is because we are not family in the first place. Okay. So if we are family, I would say, bruh, yeah, I've been working. Mm. Things are tough. Yeah. Please help me. Uh, I'm struggling. That's what family does. Yes. But the problem, when you see me lying, then gift you have broken this commandment. No, I haven't. I haven't. I try to cover up. We are not family. So uh, there's nothing that the church can do, especially if there's no evidence. Yeah. There's nothing that the church can do. You, you continue. That's the reason why some sins are not being disciplined in church today. Okay. Because we, we don't have the evidence. But if it is the seventh law, probably it's, 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 it's a visible it's, law. You see, yeah. now. it's a visible it's, sin. Yeah. yeah, but people are lying and yeah. they are not being disciplined. Yeah, because probably we don't have the evidence. The evidence exactly. Yeah. People are coveting. Yeah, yeah. But do you have evidence that I have coveted? Mm. No. So when we're looking at the law from a spiritual standpoint, yes. we then see that we all need some kind of discipline. Okay. But uh, if we look at it from the letter of the law, only those with evidence. Are the ones that are being disciplined. Okay. Uh, and, and you know, many of us are, uh, are criminals, but we are not, you know, being, being, being disciplined yeah. because some of these things are hidden. So if the church was FBI, yeah. no one was going to get into the church because they will get into your case, into your hood and uh, unearth everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my, my final question really is mm -hmm. ultimately for our salvation, what is the purpose? Okay. of the discipline now we is it to encourage us to repent is mm -hmm. it to sanitize things like you said earlier to appease okay the, the church that the has church. been offended mm -hmm. the, what is the ultimate goal in your opinion in, in in our discipline the ultimate goal is for the brother or the sister to be saved okay at the end of the day we want him to find god to appease the god whom he has aired and also uh, the people around but ultimately the primary goal yeah. is for us to have a good relationship with our God. Okay, no. Um, <laughs> Pastor Gift, thank you very much. Yes. Um, we'll see you again in next week's episode. Thank you, my brother. All right, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Is conservative. If you're looking for something liberal and realistic, this is the place to be.